Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday afternoon. Um, I'm just going to give people a few minutes to jump on, but just to quickly introduce myself. My name is Bethany. I am an educator for the Singer brand, and you can also follow me at Craft with Bethany on Instagram. But anyways, hello everyone jumping in. I'm excited to see you guys. Happy Tuesday. We're going to be going over a couple of our heavy duty sewing machines today. So no project today to sew along with. Just going over some really important information. Um, if you've ever been considering getting a heavy duty machine or you're intrigued by the machines, you want to learn more about them, then we're going to be going over that information here in just a few minutes. I'm going to give everybody a quick second to jump on and I'm going to go grab my notes that I left over there. Give me one second. All right, I wanna make sure that I am giving you guys all the details. So I have two machines here with me. Um, I have the computerized 6800C and I have the mechanical 4452. So we're gonna compare the two. We're gonna talk about the differences between a mechanical and computerized machine today and answer any questions you guys may have. So if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll try to catch them as they pop up. And if I miss any, I'll try to get back to them. Um, just a quick introduction of myself. So again, my name is Bethany or Craft with Bethany on Instagram, but that's okay. I am actually a um, education specialist for Singer. So basically what that means is I get to do fun things like this and come on here and talk to you guys about our awesome machines and also get to create some really cool projects for you all um, that you can find on singer.com or our YouTube channel or other places like that. So, um, and I'll probably be doing some projects with you guys in the future, but today we're just not sewing. We're just going to be talking about the machines. Um, so if you could do me a favor, I would love to know if anybody watching has one of our heavy duty machines. It doesn't have to be one of these two. It could be any of our heavy duties. Um, but if you have one, raise your hand or let us know in the comments. Um, if you don't have one, but you're interested, you've been thinking about getting one, um, let us know that as well. And oh, I see some people say that they love their heavy duty. That's awesome. So if you do have one, um, tell us what your favorite thing is about your heavy duty machine. Uh, we would love to know that. We can definitely mention that today. Uh, you have the 4423. I have one. So a lot of people on here have one. So I'm hoping that this will be helpful information to those who do have one. Um, and to those who are in the market or looking at getting one, uh, maybe this will help you decide if this is the right machine for you. So before we dive into that, um, on singer.com, there is a really great tool that I wanted to mention to you guys. It's called the machine finder tool on singer.com. Basically, it's just a quick questionnaire that's going to ask you what types of sewing you do, the types of material you like to sew with, um, if you're a beginner, intermediate, or more advanced sewist, um, and all those answers to the different questions that they ask is going to tell you which type singer machine is probably going to be the best fit for you because there's a lot to choose from not just heavy duty machines but there's a lot to choose from so if you are uh, feeling a little overwhelmed by all the choices I totally get it there's a lot um, but that's a good thing because then we can tailor it to get you what you need for your sewing so doing that quick questionnaire on singer.com is a great place to start another feature that you can do on singer.com is comparing machines. So you could actually go onto singer.com and compare a mechanical and a computerized machine and get all the different stats about the differences between the machines. It's a quick glance. It'll let you know quickly if the machine you're interested in has some of the key features that you might be specifically looking for. So I hope that helps answer a couple of things about how to figure out which machine might be right. Let's see here. I sew every day, it's my job. That's awesome. I sew every day too, and it's my job, so I love it. It's fun getting to like do what you love, isn't it? All right, but some of us do it just for crafting. Um, so I'm gonna talk about both of these machines a little bit, um, but just real quick, let's just talk about heavy duty. So obviously they're very recognizable by their color they're gray color. So from the outside, they just look like a sewing machine, but it's what's on the inside that makes a heavy duty machine different from a lot of our other machines. And that's the metal frame that is throughout the entire machine. And that's what makes it heavy duty. You're going to get so much more stability with that metal frame. Um, and that 
is one of the key features that I like about the machine, but it's just not something that you can see from the outside. It's in there, I promise. They are very sturdy machines. Um, some of the things that helps with these types of machines being heavy duty and, and the perks of having a machine like this is to be able to sew thicker fabrics, um, doing longer seams, 50% more power. I mean, that's like, you just get to sew faster. Did you know that these machines can sew up to 1100 stitches per minute? Like that's pretty fast. I like to sew really fast, uh, especially if it's something that I do often. Like, um, I make cute dog bandanas sometimes. So I, those are pretty simple straight stitches that I'm doing and I sew pretty fast around those. And these can handle it with that stability in that metal frame. Um, I'm not getting a bounce or a wiggle or anything. So I definitely enjoy the speed and the st stability of these machines. Um, so let's kind of dive in real quick and we're gonna get a little closer. You don't wanna look at me the whole time. Um, but we're gonna get a little closer and we're gonna talk just about the mechanical machine first. And I did a few little sample stitches here and we'll talk about those and then we'll kind of move over to the computerized one and talk about that one, okay? Um, some questions that I'm getting, can you sew silk and other fabrics? Okay, so let's just talk about that first. You wanna talk about fabrics? So this right here is very silky, thin material. I made this on the heavy duty and this is just a little shawl that I made. Um, and it made the perfect little seams here, hem when I hemmed around it. And I mean, it handles delicate materials perfectly. Um, I did this tank top, I grabbed it. I made this quick little tank top uh, a couple weeks ago. And as you can see here, it's very simple. But again, I did it on the heavy duty and my neckline is perfect. I just used a stretch stitch for the little pocket and for the hemming, did it all on the heavy duty. This is a four way stretch fabric. So it stretches this way <laughs> and it stretches this way. That's what makes it so comfortable. It's really soft. Um, so you can sew delicate things like this. Um, I recently made a luggage tag and this is made out of faux leather. So this is, I don't know if you guys can hear that. This is um, thicker faux leather. And then right here on the front is a clear vinyl. You guys probably can't see that. There's a clear vinyl. I sewed all of that on the heavy duty um, very easily. And the key part about being able to sew all these different types of fabrics is to make sure you have the right needle in your machine and you're using the right type of thread. Um, for some of these, I used a denim needle heavy duty needles for some of these heavier ones. Um, you can sew other types of faux leather. And um, I didn't sew a project out of this one yet. This is actually gonna become one of these. But I wanted to show you there's different types of leathers that you can sew with these machines. And I'm just showing you a few examples. Um, this right here is actually rope. It is clothesline rope, it's braided rope, it's quarter inch. And I just did a zigzag stitch all the way around and I made a little coaster and it just sits, it's just cute. Um, but yeah, I just made this on the heavy duty. So again, used a heavy duty needle and a simple zigzag stitch and some matching thread and you can sew a lot of different things. I've sewed denim on them. Um, last Christmas, I made a doggy snuggle sack that had denim on the outside and like this faux Sherpa on the inside. So when you're trying to match up a denim that doesn't stretch and a faux Sherpa that's fluffy, that stretches, um, the heavy duty machine handled it well and it went over the seams perfectly. You know, it can get really thick when you start trying to sew not only over denim, but denim seams. Um, where you've got your seams. So that can be a little tricky sometimes on some machines, but these machines handle that very well. And part of that is because they have that extra lift in the foot to be able to fit thicker material through. So I hope that helps answer a couple of those questions about different types of fabrics. So it can be very delicate fabrics. It can be stretchy fabrics. It can be thick fabrics, heavy fabrics. Uh, it really doesn't matter. These machines are built to handle just about anything, okay? So let's dive in a little closer. I'm gonna move this. My camera wants to keep falling asleep. Okay, so this is the 4452. This is a mechanical sewing machine. This is our heavy duty mechanical. Um, 
These are just a few of the stitches that I did. Before we jumped on here, these are the stitches that are on this turn dial right here. Um, so on the mechanical machine, there are 110 stitch applications and one buttonhole. And then basically where it's these black numbers right here, those are gonna be the first stitch all the way around. And then if you turn it to the blue S1, that's gonna be the second stitch on each one of these. And then if you turn it to the red S2, that's gonna be the third stitch on each one of these all the way around. I mostly use the black stitches just for the basics and that's what I did on these and my stitch width was three. So I'm just showing you some examples. Again, these will all look different based on your stitch length and width that you're using. Uh, please mention, okay, uh, let's see here. Scrolling, scrolling. Okay. Um, so one thing I want you guys to know is these machines that I'm going to be talking about today are available on singer.com. Um, I believe this machine right now is currently a hundred dollars off and the 6,800 computerized machine is $130 off. So if you are in, interested in either one of these machines, um, that is a great place to go get them. Or you can, um, check out one of our local singer retailers and dealers as well. Um, so other things I want to point out on the mechanical machine is you're going to see a lot of turn dials and levers. So this is your reverse. You have these knobs across the top for different like needle positions and width and tension. Um, the way that these two machines thread is going to be the same. The way you wind a bobbin is going to be the same. Um, but this machine doesn't have the buttons and the LCD screen that the computerized machine is. Uh, does have so it does have the drop down see how that pops up it does have the drop in bobbin right there i love that feature both of these machines have that because then you can see your bobbin from the top it's got that clear cover and while you're sewing if you can quickly glance and see if you're running low on your bobbin so that's a great feature right there as i mentioned before the um, foot has the down up and then it goes up even further to be able to fit your thicker fabrics underneath there. Um, of course, they all have the front pocket right here compartment for your accessories, which is a great place to keep them. I also keep extra needles in there, specific for my heavy duty machines. So I'm gonna take a quick glance and see what other questions we might have. Awesome. All right, so there's some of those. And now I'm gonna kinda quickly, we're gonna kinda quickly switch over to this one. Um, now both of these machines have some of the same features and I'm gonna point those out on this one because this one has a lot of different features as well. Um, so again, it's got that front compartment. Again, I keep my extra needles right there. It's got that drop-in bobbin right here. Um, again, the foot, the presser foot, this one's on the side right here. It goes up even further, which is so handy, again, with those thicker materials. It does thread the same. It does wind a bobbin the same. But you notice I only have one dial at the top up here, and that's for tension. Um, the rest of my controls are going to be on this panel right here. I'm going to get in a little closer. Some of my favorite things that I like to point out on this machine compared to the mechanical is there's a lot more bells and whistles, obviously, that come with a computerized machine. Um, and one of the things I love about this one is this little slide that lets you sew faster. <laughs> As we were talking earlier, if you like to sew fast like I do, I'm a pedal to the metal. Um, this will just let you do that. So it helps you kind of control the speed of the machine right across there. Um, this is your needle up down button. What I love about sewing with this machine is when I get to the end and I stop and I let my foot off of the foot control, the needle automatically comes back up to the up position. But if I wanna put it down when I'm starting a stitch, I just have to hit this button right here. And then right next to it is the knot button. This is how you can tie off and finish a stitch. And then this right here will cut your threads for you. But it does have the thread cutter over on the side. So let me just... All right, someone asked about Singer UK support. That would be singerco.co.uk. That's singerco.co.uk for 
UK support for Singer. And if you guys have any specific questions about your Singer machine, about um, needing customer support or anything, you're welcome to send us a DM and someone from our team can help answer that question uh, or, or point you in the right direction to who you need to speak with, okay? Um, speed control, perfect. I'm just kind of quickly glancing. Awesome, okay. So some other features on here. So right here on this machine is a couple of little pullouts. I love this part. <laughs> this is probably my favorite part. It shows you all the different types of stitches that come with the 90, I mean, yes, with the 6800. So this, this computerized machine has over 560 different uh, stitch applications and nine different style buttonholes. And one of the features is letters and numbers. And as you can see, I wrote the word sew, which is probably backwards for you guys, but I wrote the word sew on here and I did a couple of the decorative stitches just for fun to show you guys. These are so fun to play with. So if you have this machine and you haven't played around with all of these different decorative stitches, just get some scrap material and go through them. They're really fun. Um, obviously they'll look a little different based on your stitch width and length and what you have it set to, but you can really do some fun decorative stitching on your projects uh, with these and there's so many options. They are bold. Yes, I did choose a black thread so you guys could see it really well. Um, I love the stars. Aren't those stars fun? So, um, one of the things that, um, both of these machines come with, and I'm gonna, I love pointing out this feature, is our, um, built-in needle threader right here, and I'm kind of doing it from the wrong side. Sorry, guys. I'm backwards here. And this just helps you thread your needle so easily. And both of these heavy duty machines do come with that. Now for the bobbin, as I mentioned, it is a drop in bobbin and it does use the size 15 class, the transparent bobbins. I'll pull one out and just show you. Just like that. And again, you wind your bobbin up here on the top and then you drop it in. That simple. Um, the feet are press on, presser feet, so there's a little button right here in the back and you could just drop your foot just like that and then you just drop your foot and it'll snap back on and comes back up. Pretty simple. So it makes it easy to swap out your feet. Um, any other questions specifically to the 6800? I know I just kind of went over a few of the things. Again, you have the computerized screen. You have all of these easy control buttons. You have all of your stitches right here at a quick glance. And then you have your reverse button on this machine is a button, whereas the other one was an up-down lever that you have to hold to go in reverse. This one's a button that you hold down. Um, again, the up-down needle, the tie-off, and the cut. I use these all the time when I'm sewing. It just makes it so much faster and so much more efficient. questions can I help answer? I'm going to quickly look. Um, one of the things that I did want to point out to you all on these heavy duty machines, and I'll kind of turn it a little bit again, is it does have the slim free arm. So this does slide off so that if you were trying to hem around a cuff or a pant leg, especially if you're trying to hem some jeans, you can slide that in and be able to get your fabric underneath. And then when you're done, just pop it right back on and your compartment's still there. To lower the feed dog, which are these right here, you're gonna slide this all the way off and in the back back here is a lever and you just slide it to one side and the feed dogs will drop down. And then you can sew whatever you need, like if you're doing a button, you don't want your feed dogs up, you want them in the down position. And so that way you can just stitch the button on back and forth, you're not moving anything through and then when you're done, you're going to slide that lever back and do the hand wheel. I'm going to slide this over. Do the hand wheel one full stitch motion, and that'll bring the feed dogs all the way back up. That's the trick. Pretty straightforward. 
very stretched like spandex and knit. So yes, um, you can sew um, stretchy fabrics, knit fabrics. I was showing earlier, this is a tank top that I made and um, this is a four way stretch fabric. So it stretches this way and it stretches this way. And I used it even on this small hem all the way around my shirt. I used it on sewing on this pocket. Um, and I just used a zigzag stitch as my stretch stitch. Very simple. Um, and it just makes it look so like professionally, like I bought this at the store, but I made this myself. I should have just worn this today. Um, but I wore this so you guys could see the silky fabric. So I did the same thing. Um, but this one, I didn't do a zigzag stitch. I did a straight stitch because it doesn't have a stretch to it. And I just wanted a straight, straight hemline. Um, so yeah, you can sew your stretchy fabrics and your um, spandex and things on here as well. Uh, the sewing space different between the two. So I think you might be talking about, and I'm going to turn this, the distance between here and here versus here and here. And yes, this one is a little longer on the computerized machine. This space is a little longer. Just a little bit. This one's a little more narrow right through here. But again, you still have that arm that comes off on both of them to be able to get around the narrow spaces. Like on a cuff. Let's see here. Um, the 44, if you just got the 4452, you're in good hands. I mean, there's, I know I'm talking all about the two. I'm just comparing computerized to mechanical between these two. Again, both are heavy duty. Both are wonderful machines. Um, the key difference is just going to be some extra bells and whistles with the computerized, uh, including a bunch more stitch applications. There's a lot more stitches that come with this one. Um, so, uh, would you recommend it for quilting? Um, I believe... There are a lot more decorative stitches that you could use for quilting. I don't quilt. I'm not a quilter. My mom is a quilter and I wish I wish I could quilt. <laughs> Maybe one day she'll teach me how to quilt. Um, I can appreciate the patience that goes into quilting. Um, but that's not something I have a lot of experience in, but I can definitely find out for you and we can let you know. But I know that there are some quilting um, decorative stitches that would be perfect for quilting. And then I know we also have a foot that helps with lining up your decorative stitching. So that's helpful. Space between needle and head of this machine more specifically. I feel like, I feel like there, they might be a little bit of a difference. I think what they're talking about is between here and between here. Um, at a glance, these two machines are like the same height, but I think you might be right that there might be just a little bit of difference between here and here. And I've honestly never noticed that. So you guys are noticing things that I've never noticed. And I have these machines sitting next to me all the time. Um, advice on twin needle for the 4452. Um, I actually have never used a twin needle on the 4452. So I don't want to say, um, I may not be the right person to ask that question, but we can get you an answer. Um, I have a twin needle. I just haven't used it on the 4452. So I can't speak to my experience with that. Um, but Singer does have twin needles that you can get for their machines. So um, that might be a good question that you can send us a little DM and we can try to get that answer for you. Walking foot is wonderful for quilting and a lot of general sewing. Yes, that's a great thing to mention. I have a walking foot that I used when I earlier was talking about the denim um, and faux Sherpa fluffy dog uh, snuggle sack that I made last winter. Um, I used a walking foot for that. Uh, it definitely helps when you're feeding two different types of material through the machine, um, especially when one of them doesn't have stretch and the other one did. It helped them stay in line so that one didn't end up with this, this big gap at the end. Um, so that was very helpful. So yeah, so walking foot is definitely a must have when you're sewing. Um, but it's not something you always need with these machines, but it just depends on the type of fabric you're using. Will it work well for leather? Yes. Um, and for faux leather, I showed a project I did earlier. Let me see here. This is a faux leather 
luggage tag that I made. Um, and this is a kind of like a rough, like almost plasticky feeling faux leather. And then we also have some softer faux leathers as well um, that are feel more like leather. Um, but depending on whichever one you want to sew with, it will sew through these. I sewed a straight stitch around this one to be able to make the luggage tag. And I sewed on this clear vinyl to keep it waterproof and protected on my luggage. So, and I just use a little clasp and I did it all on the heavy duty. So yes, you can sew faux leather um, and vinyl. Um, you can sew clothesline rope on these. You can sew delicate silky fabrics. You can sew stretchy knits. You can sew denim. Um, that's what's so great about our heavy duty line is there's just so much versatility. There's really not limitations to what you can do with either one of these machines. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I prefer to sew on them as much as I can. Um, but again, I highly recommend if you are in the market for a new Singer sewing machine and you're not sure if heavy duty is the right choice for you or if one of our other mini sewing machines is the right choice for you, go to Singer.com, use our machine finder tool, take the quick little quiz and it'll definitely point you in the right direction. It asks some very informative questions about where you're at in your sewing journey to figure out where you need to go. Okay, with which machine? All right, so let's see here. What needles do you suggest for a heavy duty fabric? Okay, great question. I'll show you which ones I always keep right here. And that's the denim. I love the denim needles. I always keep extra ones in here. Um, so I definitely recommend a denim needle just on standby. <laughs> I use them a lot. When it comes to denim and leather, do I just need to make sure I have the right needle and I'm good? Or is there a better setting? Um, it definitely, the needle's going to be the game changer for you. And you want to make sure that you have the right type of thread. Um, so the thicker the material, the stronger the thread needs to be. Um, and then make sure you have your bobbin in right um, and wound properly. But definitely, if you're sewing with denim, um, and when I sewed the leather, I used the denim needle. Um, and I didn't have any issues. And when I sewed this little rope, I used the denim needle as well. Um, so that... It, I just use it. It's very versatile and, and helpful. Um, when I sewed my knits in my silky fabrics, I used ballpoint. I used um, a standard universal needle for those. So you can use those basic needles, um, tr uh, the standard needles on both of these machines as well. Let's see here. We've got people watching from all over. It's so nice to see you all. The perfect stitch look, thicker thread or needle. Um, I think it really just to get the perfect stitch, it's going to depend on the fabric that you're sewing. And when you choose the fabric, you're going to want to make sure you have the right needle and thread. So universal needle and a universal thread are going to give you really nice stitches on just a simple cotton or woven fabric. Um, uh, if you are doing something like stretchy knits like I did on this. This is a tank top that I made. If you're going to do stretchy fabrics like this, you're going to want a stretch thread, a, th um, a thread that has stretch in it. Uh, and then you're going to want to use like a zigzag stitch um, or a stretch stitch. Okay. Um, but again, if you're having any issues with your stitches, it's probably either your machine isn't threaded properly either from the top or from the bottom, or you're using the wrong kind of needle. Um, so if you're ever having questions about that, don't hesitate to send us a DM. Um, sometimes it's easier to answer those questions by seeing the trouble that you're having. But I will tell you, if you're stitching and you're seeing issues on the top of your stitch, then your, ha your bobbin's not in properly. If you're having issues on the bottom of your stitch, then there's something wrong. It's probably not threaded properly from the top. So it's opposite, okay? So issues on the top are coming from the bottom and issues on the bottom are coming from the top, okay? Maintenance that you recommend. Well, a couple things. Um, that's a great question, by the way. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up. So they recommend that you change your needle every eight to 10 hours of sewing, which sounds like not a lot, but it just depends on how much you sew, okay? And it also depends on how much you're sewing and the type of fabric you're sewing. So if you're sewing a lot of 
rope and making baskets and stuff, then yeah, you may need to change out your needle more often. If you're just sewing some softer stuff, then you can probably go to that eight to 10 hours. Um, I recommend keeping a little log next to your machine. Um, just kind of like you might keep the mileage up in your car, have a mileage log, you might wanna do that if you're sewing on your machine a lot. Um, I also, I sew all the time. Um, I also recommend having it serviced every so often. Um, I sew for a living, so I sew often, even on my personal machines. And um, I try to get mine serviced at least once a year um, locally. And then I will go in there and clean it out myself. So these little top plates, you can take these off and get any of the lint and, and strings and threads out. It's very helpful and smart to do that every so often, especially if you're sewing things that have that shed, like that faux Sherpa I was talking about, it was everywhere. <laughs> and I definitely went in there and cleaned out my personal machine um, so that it would sew better. And it just helps it feed, um, feed so much better. So I recommend doing that for sure. Oh, let's see here. So for maintenance, yes. Do you need to oil it? I, I don't, I get it maintenance, my personal machine, I get maintenance about once a year and that person handles all of that. Um, so if you can find someone local or reach out through um, someone with Singer, uh, they might be able to help you figure that out or one of our dealers might be able to recommend someone for that. Um, is polyester a good thread? Yes, um, I use polyesters, I use cotton blends and then I also have some rayon decorative. So the rayon is fun because it's got a nice shine to it, comes in some really bright colors, and those are fun for these decorative stitches, which I didn't use it today on this one. Um, but yes, I have a, I don't know if you saw my variety of threads back there that I have. So yes, you can't go wrong with those. Uh, where to get needles for the 4452. So a lot of our local dealers will have needles. You can also order needles through singer.com. Um, and yeah, there's a lot. Of, let's see here, she's my brother's manual singer. New belt for her, yes. Oh, that's exciting to get family hand-me-down machines. That's so cool. I have several of those from my mom and my grandmother. Well, what go through layers of denim? If you could clarify that, that would be helpful. Okay, so you're having looping on the top. Uh, loose looping sewing stitches at the bottom. I've checked the threading from the top and it's correct. Um, it could be the needle and it could be the tension. Um, so you may want to kind of play around with your tension, which if you are using a mechanical machine, it's this knob right here. And on our computerized machine, it's in the same place. These are set to four and that's kind of what I've always kept them at. I've never had any issues and it could also be your thread. Um, your quality of thread is going to really determine the quality of your stitches. So don't skimp on the thread. It's actually very, very important to have really good thread. So maybe it's just changing out the thread that you're using. Um, how many layers can I challenge the 4452 with? That's a great question. Um, you know, why don't you try and let us know? <laughs> it can do a lot. It can handle a lot. I don't know that I've ever put it to the test like that, but with this arm, the foot going up even higher, I mean, you do have this much room. I mean, I can stick my whole finger under there. So you have that much room to get some fabric under there. Um, I would take it slow, maybe use the hand dial, the hand knob over here to get your stitches going. I wouldn't just hit the pedal to the metal. I would take it nice and slow and make sure you have a denim needle in there or a really strong needle, um, heavy duty needle. Let's see here. Will it go through layers of denim? I think I just answered that one. Will it sew through the layers of denim without the needle stalling or breaking? If you have the right needle in place, uh, you definitely get you a strong denim needle. It will go over um, when you are hemming some jeans, for, let's say, and you've got that side seam and you've got it folded over and you need to go through that side seam that's layered over, it will handle that um, for sure. Uh, just make sure that you have your stitch correctly 
Um, you probably don't want to do like a super tight stitch. You probably want to do a wider stitch just to get through some of those spots, um, especially the first time around. Just make sure that um, you have a good needle in place. That's really, that and quality thread is going to be your key elements to making sure that you can sew through and really test these heavy duty machines out and sew through that denim. Oh, uh, thanks. I'm, I hope I'm answering them correctly for you guys. I mean, I am just telling you from my personal experience, I've been sewing just so you guys know, I've been sewing since I can remember. Um, I've been sewing since I was, I don't know, seven or eight years old. And um, it's just been a passion of mine. I grew up with sewing. My mom was a sewist. My grandmother was a sewist. My mom made all of my clothes growing up. And so I just kind of grew up around it. And I fell in love with sewing. Uh, when I was little, I made clothes for my dolls and things like that. And then as I got older, I started upcycling garments and then I went to school for fashion design. And um, and here we are, I get to work with Singer and share my passion with you all. So it's just so much fun. Oh, thanks you guys. What thread brand do you like to use? Uh, let's see here. Let me see what I've got over here. I've got some dual dirt. I've got a lot of all-purpose. Coats of Clark, the dual duty. I mean, those are some of the ones that I kind of go to a lot that I, um, I've never had really any issues with. Um, so those are, I also have a bunch of rayon threads that I got as well. So, oh, thank you. You have this fashion mate. I actually have the fashion mate sitting right down here. I had to move it so I could fit all of this up here today. So next month, I'm glad that you guys are loving this. And I'm actually having so much fun talking with you guys this afternoon. Um, I am going to start doing these probably once a month or more. Um, Instagram lives, just coming on and chatting. I want to let you guys know that next month, uh, which is September, can't believe it's almost September. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Quantum Stylus 9960, which is sitting right there. <laughs> and I'm going to be talking about that machine. And in that live, I'm going to be diving in a little bit more on the computerized features of our Singer machines. Um, so that's why I didn't dive too deep into the 6800 and all of those computerized features, because we're really going to dive in deep on that next week. I mean, next month, sorry, not next week. Although I think next week is September, but it'll be at the end of September. So stay tuned, watch for that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope this helped answer some questions about the, the heavy duty machines, the differences between a mechanical and computerized. There are some similarities. Um, and there's some of the same stitches, like all of the stitches I did on the mechanical, you can do on the computerized. It's just getting to them is a little different, obviously here, but ultimately they're heavy duty machines. They're going to be wonderful for whatever project you have. If you ever have specific questions about the machines and what they can do. You can always send us a DM and again, go to singer.com and use that machine finder tool and then also compare machines. If you're curious, if you want a mechanical or computerized, you can compare, compare the two and it'll give you all the info and then you can make the best decision for you and your sewing journey. Okay. You jump from one machine to another when sewing. Sometimes I do. And I'll tell you when I do that is usually when um, I am sewing a couple of projects at the same time and my settings need to be different. So, uh, let's see. That's great. It's, it's, you know what? I'm glad sewing is making a comeback with, um, a younger generation. We're seeing more and more people pick up this hobby. Um, and I just want to inspire people to, to, get back into it if they haven't done it in a while or pick up a new hobby. Sewing is a wonderful hobby, even if you're just picking it up for mending. Um, it's just a wonderful thing to have as that skill set. Um, and one of my favorite things to do is to teach others how to sew. So if you ever have, um, uh, if you ever are looking for a project to try, you want to maybe try something new that you haven't sewn before, you can always check out our projects that we have on singer.com. I do write some of those, so I hope you guys enjoy them. And then we also have projects available on our YouTube channel as well. So, yeah. Where can I get the Quantum 9960? All of these machines are available on Singer.com and some of our local dealers in your area as well. Okay, I'm excited that you guys are excited about next month's video or live with the 9960. So, 
Uh, my Instagram account is craft with Bethany. That simple. All right, guys. Well, I have had so much fun with you this afternoon. I hope this has been informative. Again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to send us a DM. This live will get posted to our news feed. And if you have any additional questions, you can comment when it's posted. But I go, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next month. Bye guys.